I really thought, okay, this Sunday's going to be Labor Day, people's <laughs> traveling, my family's here, I'm going to be really nice and do something <laughs> really easy. And I really tried. <laughs> I really did, but I wasn't being true to myself as to where it ended up. I always start out, you know, kind of forming something that sounds good or looks good, but then something just takes over. Spirit just takes over and, and is the driver. And I'm going to let it keep driving uh, the way that we are to go. So this is pretty uh, interesting uh, title. If I can get it up there, Tim. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. If we take that basically as an outward thing, sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? We are gods. So kind of stay with me here and I'll see if I can make some sense of this for you. Um, there's a little thing I wanted to share with you here from Alan Watts. Alan Watts has been a, a good influence for me for a lot of years. Sort of a futurist visionary that was able to see down the road uh, 20, 30 years ago as to where things were going to go in a spiritual uh, way. And he's been pretty accurate and pretty right about it. But he gives a lot to think about. And I like that. I like for someone that can stimulate my own personal thinking about things. But he says, um, he is an interpreter of Zen Buddhism, who says he answered children when they asked him the question such as, why are they here? Where the universe came from? Where people go when they die and so on? And he answered them with a parable about God playing hide and seek. Watts could tell them God enjoys the game, and I want you to get this, but has no one outside of himself to play. <coughs> Think about that. If everything is God, God is before and after everything, then God, and, and I'm giving you a lighter idea of God here, not this reserved, religious, fearful God that we're all afraid of and even at all with but a more friendly relationship with God. So he says here that he overcame this problem of being, um, having nobody to play with, and therefore, and not having any playmates, he pretended he is not himself and instead pretends that he is me and you. And all other people, and the animals, the rocks, the stars, the planets, and in doing so has wonderfully wondrous adventures. Do you ever think of God as adventurous? You know, we have such a fixed idea of God. And of course, Christianity, basic Christianity, has an anthropomorphic idea of God. Big word, I know, but it's an interesting word you need to learn, but it means that we have created God in our likeness and image. See, we've taken something that has no beginning and no end, no definition, that is so beyond us, and then we make God look like us, like an old man up in the sky. An old white beard sitting on a throne who looks like us. That's anthropomorphic. That means that we create in our own image and likeness this God that is separate from us out there. But to think of God as adventurous kind of connects with me because I feel adventurous. I've always been adventurous all my life. I've always loved a new adventure. I've always loved a new challenge. I've always loved expansion, change, uh, maybe too much uh, in my life, but I've always been a person on the move. And I like to think that's an aspect of my God part of me who is living through me having an adventure. I like that idea. It feels good. He says that these adventures are more like dreams because when he awakes, they disappear. And he writes, and here's the story. Now, when God plays hide and seek and pretends that he is you and me, he does it so well that it takes him a long time to remember where and how he hid himself. But that's the whole fun of it, just what he wanted to do. He doesn't want to find himself too quickly for that would spoil the game. That is why it is so difficult for you and me to find out that we are God in disguise, pretending not to be himself. But when the game has gone on long enough, 
All of us will wake up, stop pretending, and remember that we're all one single self, the God who is the all there is and who lives forever and forever. That's amazing. That this part of us, this human part of us, is God who doesn't remember who it is. And that's why I believe that the greatest thing can happen to humanity today is to awaken. We have slept too long in the density of this human illusion, or the Course of Miracle calls it the dream. The dream. And I've told you how it says that Adam, a great sleep came upon Adam. And I've challenged those Bible in the Bible, show me where he woke up. Come on, Adam. Come on. Come on, a deep sleep fell upon him. And that sleep was a fall in frequency. He fell into the density to believe he was only a body needing a spirit and forgot he was a spirit getting ready to have a body experience. And I don't believe that Adam woke up until it incarnated enough to develop its soul and it woke up 2,000 years ago as Jesus the Christ, the last Adam. The Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. He was the last of the fallen and woke up and realized, I'm the Son of God, the Christ, the divine in human form. And Jesus is the first to wake up in the human dream. Symbolically, at a subconscious level, at a, at a level uh, that Jungian or psychology would see it, we're seeing that as ourselves waking up in the dream. And more and more people are experiencing this waking up. It will be no doubt and shocking to some to think themselves as God. But Watts was talking about the core essence that is beyond the ego and deeper within the personal unconsciousness, the collective unconsciousness, all archetypes. Joseph Campbell. How many has heard of Joseph Campbell? The famous Joseph Campbell. Yes. He says, you see, there are two ways of thinking I am God. If you think I hear in my physical presence and in my temporal character am God, then you are mad and have short-circuited the experience. If you are God, not in your ego, but in your deepest being, where you are at one with the non-dual transcendent, that is God. So let's look at a couple of things here that I want to share with you today. If people could center themselves in the awareness that they are God consciousness, mm -hmm. instead of just believing in the existence of such a magnificent force, then we could change the world. I want to read it again. If we could just center ourselves enough to be aware that within us is the presence of the God consciousness. The mind of God is shared among all of his sons and daughters. If we, enough of us, could wake up to know this one thing, we could change the world. It is only when we continue to live separate from this infinite consciousness, which is our original nature, that we become powerless and uh, perpetuate all suffering and negativity on the planet. So let's look at John 10, 34 in the Bible. What was going on here is kind of interesting, is that the the Jewish people of his time were not happy with the fact that they were finding a human being that looked like them declaring itself to be the Son of God. So they gave him a hard time about it and said, but you're a man just like we are. But you're declaring yourself to be divine. To be the, the, son, the Son of God. And Jesus answered them very interestingly. He said, is it not written in your law? Now these are Old Testament people. 
These are people of the Old Testament who were still believing in all of the laws that are contained in the Old Testament, which is 613 laws. Everybody thinks the Ten Commandments are the laws. No, there's 1,613 different laws contained in ordinances. We've talked about some of them. Not wearing mixture of material, wool and linen, was an abomination. Not eating shrimp. All these crazy things that all these people say they believe in and go out and do. Trust me, you'll see a lot of Christians at, at the fish place uh, having fish today, but yet they will condemn the other abominations in there. So they pick out the ones they want for their political agendas and, and uh, ignore the ones that they like to do. And Jesus tried to tell us that did not work. I've spoke to you through the law and you did not perceive it. And therefore I've come not to destroy but to fulfill the law and to bring you and bridge you into a new age of grace or the age of the church. But he said unto them, Why are you giving me such a hard time? Because I declare myself to be God in the flesh, when in your law it said, ye are gods. And what is referring to here is the Old Testament, Psalms 82. Psalms 82 is one of my favorite uh, books of the Bible. There are eight verses only to that small verses. And it starts out something like this, And God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. When I first read that, I just felt it. I felt what it would be like to feel the presence of God come alive in me. God standeth. Go, God no longer just laying around, but God in action. That excited me. What that would feel like to feel the presence of God come alive in me, as me, inside of me. And I like this idea that God standeth and says, enough. Through your free will, you've made all kinds of different paths and experiences, but it's not the path that I've called you to. It's not the path of awakening. It's not the path of enlightenment. It's not the path of remembering, but it is a path that seemeth right, but the end there is death. The other path is the path of the righteous that shines brighter and brighter and brighter to a full and perfect day. Many of you have come to that place. We talked about it in the class this morning. That when you come to that crossroad, to the cross, and you have to make that choice either I'm going to follow the path that validates me in my outer world. I'm going to give my power away to politics. I'm going to give my power away to tribes. I'm going to give my power away to religion. My power away to this outer world. Or you make a choice and I'm going to follow my heart. And I do not believe you would find yourself at heart light if you had not made that choice that you're going to follow your heart toward your spiritual path that shines brighter and brighter unto a full and perfect day. We are here to assist you to wake up from this dream that we've been caught in and these nightmares that we think that we're having and therefore has lost our identity of who we truly are. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty and he judgeth among the gods. And this is interesting because the word gods here comes from the word Elohim. Elohim. There's really no word God in the original at all. We borrow the word God from the Germans. It's Germanic in the sense of gut or the word God was made out of the word good. Actually, everywhere it says there's God, there's Elohim. Mm -hmm. Elohim is not a single monotheistic God. It is a g many gods. It is the collective expression of the one made into the many. So when he says that I'm talking to you gods, I'm standing here because I need to set an order, which is what the word judge means. It doesn't mean I'm judging you right or wrong, good or bad. It means I'm setting a divine order for your life. I'm here to teach you what you were born for and what you're here to do. And that is to let your inner light shine through your heart. Mm. Heart light. Oh, Welcome to heart light. Oh, no. Welcome to heart light. Yes. Yes. The world needs this light that is in us. 
The word Elohim in this case is interesting because it means those who God has positioned in a way to distribute his attributes out into the world. So when we look at God as not a thing or an old man or a human being out there somewhere, but we see God as divine law, divine principle, we see God such as God is love. Didn't say God has love. It says God is love. So when you are experiencing any type of unconditional love, you're experiencing God. That's what God is. God is that peace in you that passes understanding. When you know you shouldn't feel the peace, but you're overwhelmed with an inner peace despite of the circumstance of the situation, you are God. When you find joy in the time that there is no reason to feel joy because everything is going down for you, but you can't help it. There's a joy that bubbles up into your heart and into your spirit, even after you get some diagnosis from a doctor or tell you something that's wrong when you could feel down, but you feel, oh no, this is not being done to me, it's being done for me as an opportunity to grow and to mature and to find the inner strength that I didn't know I had. Wow. Amen. Wow. This is what God is talking about. He's not saying you are the God. And Jesus didn't really say he was God. He said, I'm the son of God. I'm the expression of all that God is made manifest in a human experience, but awakened to it. Therefore, I've dealt, uh, developed a new inner consciousness that we call Christ consciousness. I have to quote it here, but let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Philippians 2. I love that scripture. I'm going to say it again. Let this mind. Mm -hmm. Let it. Yes. <laughs> Don't you get that feeling? It's already there, but let it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you letting love take over fear? Yes. Come on now. Huh? Are you letting peace take over the warrings of your mind? Yes. Are you letting peace of mind take over the depression, the anxiety, the discouragement of your life. It's there. Yeah. Right. You don't have to pray it down. You don't have to bargain with God. You don't have to plead with God. Right. You can't be good enough or bad enough because God's already given it to you. Right. Because all of you at a deep level are a son and daughter of God right now. Right. You can't earn it. No more than you can earn. Here's my daughter. <laughs> She's my daughter, born flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. It's not a choice. I can't say no. <laughs> Don't think so. It's done. It's a done deal. And she may not like all the things she inherited from in my DNA and whatever, but she's got it. And instead of blaming me for it, I want her to use it for her good. And God wants you to use the attributes that he's given you for the good of God. Yes. Hmm? I'm tired of trying to please a church, trying to please a religion, trying to preach, uh, please a preacher, a guru, or somebody else like that. I'm here because I want God to flow through me and as me into this world. No, you are God's. No, you are God's. Jesus says in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. But even though he said that, and this is important, you don't want to become a part of that which God is separate. You do not want to become special. You want to realize that God is a corporate collection of, of expression. That's why we need community. I feel for those who have said, well, ever since I found out that I'm the divine and I'm a part of God, I don't need anybody else. I don't need a community. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to do anything. I feel for them because no man is an island. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the island shall fall in the sea. Mm -hmm. You best to be connected to something bigger than yourself. And that's what he said here in this next place. The Father and I are one, but the Father is greater than I. Mm hmm? Hmm? So we need to realize we come in here individually and we all bring in the presence of that that God is, that collectively we create something that is greater than the sum of the parts that are here. It's called the presence of God. 
When you walk somewhere and you feel the presence of God, it's because the individuals you're with has released the presence of God in them into the collective and created a presence of God. And we all come to drink from the presence of God. When you go through a week, it can be a difficult week. Huh? And you can be thirsty because you need to drink. Maybe you're hungry for something to happen in your life. Come and eat of the bread which cometh down from heaven. This is what communion is. Communion is not taking crackers and some grape juice or wine or something like that. But it's the communion in one another. The communion is the community. Hmm? And I'm so appreciative that we have that. This is what I've been looking for a lot of years. Tim and I both, we've looked for a community to be a part of. I've been on my own for a long time. And, and it was wonderful when I was uh, brought to Unity of Charlotte for the years that I was there to be a part of that community. But when that was over and I went out by myself again, I thought, no, I really got a taste of community. I want a community, God. And I opened myself up and here I am. When you open yourself up, spirit will guide you and leave you. Real quickly, Exodus 7.1, God said to Moses, see, I've made thee a God to Pharaoh. Hmm. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it as you. You're going to be my representative. This is what he's talking about when he says, ye are gods. He's saying, you represent all that I am to the world. And all we need to do is do the inner work. And I invite you to the inner work. Got to go into the shadow. We got to go into the subconscious. We've got to go in and do the clearing out. I'm telling you, I, I'm ready for the entire principle and law of karma to be over. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but here's my thing. Even though I believe in past lives and so on and so forth, I believe this is my last life in third dimension. I do not plan to ever reincarnate back into this third dimensional experience. It's given me all that I can give me, and now it's pushing me. Hmm? It's pushing me out of its womb. Hmm? I've lived in this third dimensional womb that I've been in, but something is pushing me in, and I'm feeling the birth pangs. I'm feeling the birth pangs. And it's pushing me and making me realize I can't just fix what's breaking down in the world. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to fix this political fiasco that we're going through right now. I don't know how to fix any of these systems whatsoever. I say let's let them go into chaos and reorganize themselves into a higher frequency. And I'll give you a scripture for that if you like scripture. If you don't, I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> for the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of the Lord and the Christ. Kingdoms are systems. System. You got education systems not doing well. Especially in this country. It's very sad what's going on. How teachers are being taught. Uh, treated with such low wages and what's going on with kids and things like that. And yet you've got these interesting kids coming in that are special kids that are there to say there's a different way to teach us. Oh no, let's put them on Ritalin. Yeah, let's drug them. But if they would listen and say, there's nothing wrong with us. We just don't understand your third dimensional system of education. Wow. Yes. We're here to teach through color, sound, vibration. Yes. Yes. Hmm? They are the teachers and a child shall lead them, it says. Hmm? This is a tremendous time of transformation. And I'm sorry, we are that caterpillar. That is totally shutting down its old system of what made it a caterpillar. Completely shutting it down so it can find its new DNA. Divine nature activated. 
It is the God seed. It is the seed of all that God is in you being activated. We are the true Elohims. We are the representations of all that God is flowing through us and as us. Moses, I will do it, but I'm going to make you a God unto them. You shall speak all that I command you. To be a God, you must be an earthly represent, representative of acting with impartiality, true justice, because even magistrates and judges themselves will be judged. This passage is saying that God has appointed persons to positions of authority in which they are considered as gods among the people. They are to remember that even though they are representing God in this world, they are mortal and must eventually, uh, eventually have uh, to give account to God in how they use their authority. And I'm saying that because I don't want us to be, take the ego part of the mind and make us a separate God unto ourselves. We have to realize that even though we are free, letting God be free to move through us and as us, that there is an overall, uh, an overall presence that is there for us. The Father and I are one, but he is greater than I. So when we refer to that God, Mother, Father God, that's what we're referring to, that, that is bigger than us individually, that collective presence uh, of God within us. Ye are gods. And I'll close with just this little bit of Psalms 82. When God standeth and he says, okay, you gods, your turn. I've, I'm in, yeah, in you, but now the world needs me, and I'm in you. Are you going to let me out? Wow. Hmm? Mm. Are you going to let me express my attributes through you and as you? Then he says to them, Don't you know the world is off course? How can you do this? How can you accept the persons of the wicked? How can you do this? The world is off course. Know ye not your gods? But yet you lay down and die like the princes of the world? Know mm. you not, you are the children of the Most High, El Elyon. Ye are gods. That's the whole eight verses of that chapter that is so powerful to me. It's almost like in religion we pray to God to do it. But in this 82nd uh, Psalm, it's like God's praying to us when you're going to do it. Hmm? People say to me, how, how can some loving God let all these children starve to death in the world? No, how can the world let these children starve to death? Thank you. Bingo. Thank you. Quit blaming God for it. When God is in them, they're complaining. Mm -hmm. There's enough food in the world. There's enough money in the world. There's enough of everything in the world. If we weren't so greedy... And then using God and using Jesus with our agendas. Mm -hmm. That's what's been going on. And that's why I'm not giving him up. That's why I did get him out of the trash can. <laughs> you that threw him away. I said, get him back out because you don't know Jesus before religion got a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, he messed it up. We are the Christ. The Christ. The Son of God. I'm not all, oh, thank you, not all that God is, but I am an offspring, an expression of all that God is. Let us pray. Divine Holy Spirit, we thank you as we fumble to try to speak for you in man's language, which falls so short. Please let you be heard within the souls and the hearts of those who are here and those that have joined us through live streaming, which we're so glad for. Anyone that is in the sound of our voice to hear this message in the context of the higher self, of the spirit. Let us leave here today clearer 
about our mission to express the divine into the world. The next time that we feel fear, realize there's a greater attribute of love ready to be called upon. I am life, he said. Call upon life for your healing. I'm the peace that passes understanding. Call upon that peace. Not the peace the world can give you, but the peace that I am in you. I am your health. I'm your intelligence. I'm your guide. I am everything you need to live a spiritually successful life. I'm your prosperity. I am your riches and glory. I am that I am. I just am that I am. Let your heart light shine Time to let your